All right, let's talk about some foreign policy issues. It's 3 a.m., you're President of the United States, <laughs> your, your National Security <laughs> we're, Advisor... We're replaying the Hillary Your National Trump Security man. Advisor calls you and says, Mr. President, the Israelis have just bombed Iran's nuclear facilities. What do you do? Well, hopefully, they would have told me earlier in the day... Who's they? The National Security Advisor. They didn't know. Team. The Israelis no. did it without telling the United States. I think if I were president, the Israelis would have told us. Why do you say that? Because I am a clear ally of Israel. I am uh, very close to Netanyahu. Uh, I would, uh, and I've said publicly, I, I would rather plan a joint operation conventionally than push the Israelis to a point where they go nuclear. Because the, the, the Israelis you, are not going to tolerate an Iranian nuclear weapon. I mean, the if world the Israelis needs, told you in advance, would you say go ahead and do it? If they told me in advance, I, w I would say, how can we help you? You would actually participate in the I would, I would provide them intelligence. I'd provide them logistics support. Uh, look, and, and this is a line we have to draw. I mean, an Iranian nuclear weapon is potentially a second holocaust. Israel's a very urban country. Two or three nuclear weapons wipes out most of the Jews who live in Israel. I believe Ahmadinejad would do it in a heartbeat. I mean, when you have people who put on body suits to walk into a crowded mall to blow themselves up, you better believe they put on a nuclear weapon. So I think the world needs to understand Iran is not going to get a nuclear weapon. All the world can decide is whether they help us peacefully stop it or they force us to use violence. But Iran is not going to get a nuclear weapon. I don't know if you've seen the most recent statements from Prince Turkey of Saudi Arabia, the former ambassador in Washington, former intelligence chief. He says that if, if the Saudis see the Iranians getting a bomb, the Israelis already have a bomb, the Saudi Arabia may decide to get a nuclear bomb. They will bomb. decide to get a bomb. I mean, we're at the edge of the nightmare. We frankly may have crossed over with Pakistan. And my guess is Pakistan has well over 100 nuclear weapons and that the Pakistani military is so penetrated by, by extremist elements, you have no idea if one morning they're going to lose three or four of them. I mean, just have them stolen. Uh, you don't I, think I worry. The Pakistani military is capable of protecting that nuclear I, I, arsenal. Well, the Pakistani military was capable of protecting Bin Laden for six years. You believe that they do about it? I, it's inconceivable that he could have been in. That was a national military city. Their, their major military university is one mile from his compound. Now, do I think Bin Laden was sitting a mile away from the National Military University and nobody noticed it in their intelligence service? It's, it's inconceivable. Republicans often, and this is what I've heard over the years that I've studied this, uh, they talk very strongly about U.S.-Israeli relations. And you've been a, you're a historian, you know this, and you've lived through a lot of it. But some of the most tense moments in U.S.-Israeli relations are, have been when there's been a Republican president. Like, for example, Ronald Reagan. We're in, in this building, a strong friend of Israel, right? Right. What did he do when the Israelis under Menachem Begin, the prime minister, bombed Saddam Hussein's nuclear reactor at Osirak in 1981. At the time, they condemned it. And later, and later, he said it was a mistake to have condemned it. He ordered his uh, U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Jean Kirkpatrick, to raise her hand and condemn Israel. If you, if you would have been president, what would you have done? Well, it was a different world. I mean, I, I would, frankly, have applauded the Israelis, which I did at the time. But it was a different world. Why and was it a different world? Um, I think at the time, you had a lot more worries about the Soviet Union. I mean, Reagan was totally focused on defeating the Soviet Empire. And he didn't want anything which made that more complicated. And he had just cut a deal with the, with the uh, Saudis to flood the world with oil, to drive down the price of oil, to break the Soviet economy by cutting off all their hard currency. And, so he, and he also had the Saudis engaged in funding the, the Mujahideen in, in Afghanistan. So they were very cautious about getting the Arab world upset in that period. And, and that's why he also remembered there was a very tense period when the Israelis occupy part of Lebanon. Uh, and it's the same reason. I mean, Reagan had a, had a hierarchical principle in his mind. His job was to finish off the Soviet empire. He wasn't prepared to deal with the post-Soviet world. And he would have said so. And frankly, if you look at that eight-year campaign against the Soviets, it is one of the great strategic achievements of all time.